two-dimensional kinematics. We're going to study the motions of objects in a two-dimensional plane, in x and in y, at the same time. But there's only one thing you got to remember. The x and y motions are independent. Really, you can just solve the x motion, you can solve the y motion, completely separate, and then use that to solve whatever problem you're working on. So let's look at an example, as always. So here, got a nice big y-axis, and here, got an x-axis. And we're going to compare the motion of two objects. One here, mass m, we're going to call this one dropped. And the reason is, we're just going to drop it. It's sitting at some initial height, y naught. It's sitting at some initial position, x. And I'm going to call that d naught, because the, there's going to be another ball to compare to, x d naught. Now, we have another ball here that we're going to call, also mass m, we're going to call shot. And the difference is, shot is going to be given an initial velocity in the x direction. And just to specify it, it's always good to have your x's and y's x naught, right? vx naught for the shot ball. And it also sits <coughs> originally at a height y naught, and it can sit at x s naught for shot, x s naught. Okay. So that's our situation. Now what we want to do is think about what's going to happen and describe it with equations. Well, let's see. Let's put some little trajectories on there. Let's predict some trajectories. I bet you this one is just going to fall straight down, dropped, right? Sure enough, dropped just falls straight down. And this one, shot, we're just giving an initial velocity, <clears throat> just like if I throw the chalk. Ah, it kind of goes in an arc. I'll draw it a lot shorter. And it goes down like that. So let's think about the kinematics of these. Um, let's do dropped. Dropped. Let's see. We want to describe its x and y motions independently. So let's first do x. Dropped. x d is a function of time. Well, we know in kinematics it's always x would be x naught plus v x naught t plus one half a x t squared. Right? We've got to put all those together. But in this case, a lot of those are zero. Right? So x d is equal to x d naught plus uh, the initial velocity in x times t, but it has no initial velocity, so that term is zero, plus one half a t squared term is if it's accelerating, but there's no reason for this thing to accelerate in the x. There's no gravity in the x direction. So all those terms are zero. So in x, it's really just x equals x d naught. Right? That's all you got. Um, let's look at its y motion. It's completely independent. y d of the drop ball as a function of time. Well, it does have some initial value. I'm just going to call it y naught. I'll call it y d naught, just so we don't get confused. Right? Y d naught and y s naught are the same. Right? So it has some initial height. Plus, the next would be the initial velocity. And the initial velocity in the y was 0. So that term isn't there. Okay? And then 1 half a t squared part, well, it does have an acceleration due to gravity down. These are both falling. So 1 half a t squared, well, the a acceleration is g and it's down. So you'd say y equals y d naught minus 1 half g t squared. Okay? So we just did the kinematics for the drop ball. And we did it separate. x just sits there, y drops. And if you think about it in the real world, that's what really happens. If we wait some amount of time, the x position doesn't change, the y position does. The y position gets smaller because it is falling. The origin, of course, is down there. Let's look at shot. Let's see. The x position of shot, xs, is equal to what? Well, it does have an initial um, x position, xs naught. And does it have an initial x velocity? Yes. So that's 
uh, uh, v x naught. We're not specifying it's s, but we're on the s equation. T, right? That's the standard kinematics equation. Plus in the x direction, does it have an acceleration? No, it does not, right? There's no gravity this way. There's no reason it should accelerate this way. It's just following Newton's first law. A body in motion remains in motion. And that's true for x and for y. So in x, there's no reason it should slow down. So we're done. No acceleration term if we ignore air resistance, OK? Uh, let's see, y. Let's do y for shot. Right. Uh, the y position for shot, it does have an initial value. We'll call it y s naught. Right, just to be consistent, y s naught. Um, does it have an initial velocity? And the answer is no. Right? The initial velocity was just in x. If it shot this way from a resting position in y, then there is no uh, initial y velocity. None of these had initial y velocity. Uh, does it have a y acceleration, 1 FAT squared? Yes, everything is falling due to gravity. So it's minus 1 half g t squared. So that is the full description of kinematics, OK? So you have to do two motions for each mass. They're independent, so one, two. And then we had two masses, so three, four. So we had to do four cases of kinematics. And now let's see what we could learn from this. Um, one question is, do they hit at the same time? How long does it take them to fall? And for that, you'll notice that the y motions are identical. y d naught minus 1 half gt squared, y s naught minus 1 half gt squared, and actually y d naught and y s naught are the same thing. So in terms of the y axis, these are exactly the same motion. And it's the y axis that determines how long they're in the air, right? Because they're in the air for the time it takes to fall from y naught down to y equals 0. So y determines time. Determines the hang time, you could say, although hang time usually refers to something shot up. But anyway, how long they're in the air. Uh, these two are different, right? Their x position, this one just drops, stays the same. This one tells you how far it goes. So this one in the x, they're different, and this one determines how far shot goes. All right, so the time you would plug in would be, well, how long did it take for it to hit, reach the ground? Right, so given enough initial conditions, you could solve for t, t to hit the ground. And then you could plug it in here and see how far it got. So let's see um, if this is true. So we have a little setup here. And it's got a rod, a spring-loaded rod. And what we do is we push it back with a little trigger mechanism. So now that rod is going to shoot out. This mass hangs on the rod. Right? So this is kind of like dropped. The rod's going to pull out. This is going to fall down. This mass gets shot. This is shot because the rod is going to push it and shoot it to the left. But since they're both following under the influence of gravity at the same acceleration, they should hit the table at the exact same time. So let's see if that works. There you go, within my ear, same time. And except shot made some x, or some, uh, x motion. It moved in the x. And if you timed how long it took them to drop, and you knew the x velocity, you'd see the x velocity is constant, and you could figure out how far it went. So that's the first simplest case of 2D to kinematics and comparing two motions.